in a rapidly shifting society, now more than ever, it is essential to stay grounded. Balance is key, but harmony is better. Here, we provide the keys to tap into the divine masculine without sacrificing the divine feminine, because confusion not transmuted becomes confusion transferred. This is Divine Masculine Activated, a weekly Tuesday evening tap in brought to you by Mastermind Connect and curated by the good brothers J.D. Weatherspoon and Courtney Grange. We invite you to grab your activation method of choice, get comfortable, take a deep breath, and bring your whole self into the space. Act like we vibing it. See, I don't want to move because what if our tempo is different? <laughs> Yo, what up, what up, what up, y'all? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dogs and cats, pronouns of all ages, welcome to another episode of Divine Masculine Activated. I am Courtney Grange. He is. Your country cousin, JD, who know big words, though. What up, good brother? Man, it's been a minute. How are you? Say it again. How art thou? How are you living? I'm good, man. It is. It is a. It's a beautiful, beautiful existence now. Now and again, these days, man, I have no complaints. Um, but I got a whole lot of work to get done. So feels good. I to mean, be you, you wanted to eat though. Can't complain about having a lot on your plate. And oh, dang! What you say? That's fine. <laughs> so anyway, oh, we here. But like we always do at this time, thank y'all for jumping into this episode. As we get started, please like, share, subscribe to this DMA web series that you're watching on YouTube. We appreciate your support. And of course, we can't do this without you. So we love you, all of our family. Welcome to another episode. We about to get all right, so <sighs> we are gathered here today to talk about sacred sexuality, right? We're gonna find a way to get like sex and sexuality into every season, because let's be honest, it's in most things. Um, and who doesn't wanna talk about sex? Right, especially when you talk about the mechanisms and the metaphors at the same time, then it gets really fun. And so the guest that we have today, switch it up a little bit, is looking at it from the lens of the modern black man, right? So we got in some good fellas, our comrades, Wayne Bay and Greg Dawson, the second, not the first one, it's the brother. Uh, they're going to join us and we all really going to chop it up, get into Tantra, sacred seed practices, sex energy work, kink, and a few other things, man. We got all that and some more stuff. Now, of course, like we always do, uh, tying in the dynamics of masculine and feminine energy, right? All throughout, you're not really going to know what's happening. Lubrication. Um, once we connect it back to the other versions of All Black, though, which once again, we promise, we're telling you now, but it's like a Dave Chappelle show. Like, you know the joke we're going to finish on, you still won't see the joke that we're going to finish on. And so with that being said, Corey, you ready to bring these boys in, man? Let's get it. Let's get it. It's man time out here. Okay. Okay. So while skipping the punk circumstance of attempting to give other people's resume for them or let them tell their own story, right? Uh, first and foremost, the big guy Greg D, also known as, uh, what is it? Boris, Boris Chestnut. Boris oh, Chestnut. man himself. I dig it, though. I mean, like, I don't, do you just intentionally befriend people that are also bald with nice beards? And alphas, too, so shout out to the brother. Oh, well, okay, <laughs> you answered the question for me. You said the quiet part all out. <laughs> but Greg, um, we brought him in on season one. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. since then, he's been in a lab, cooking up some new stew, going through a few yeah. iterations of his own. And so he's going to revisit us to let us know what he's learned in all of his journeys and his travels. So we're going to bring my man up to the stage. Yep, 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 yep. What's going on, fam? What's going on? Zone? What up, brother? Yeah, man. How you living? All good over here, man. I'm going to be with y'all. Perfect. Look, we're happy that you're here with us. You know what I mean? You could have been anywhere in the world today, but you, you're here with us and That's everybody right. watch it. Word, word. And next up to bat, 
And oh, this man, brother, man. and this, and this, 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 like, I'm really excited about the fact that we've got these different personalities in here with different experiences. But Wayne is coming in swinging with a lot of the stuff that we've been learning about, we've been practicing from a personal mm-hmm. perspective. He's been doing professionally, and so this is about to be that conversation that a lot of people think that they're having around sacred sexuality for black men. Right. <laughs> actually about to have it with an most people don't know nothing about boxing listen man <laughs> most people don't know nothing about boxing we will have that actual conversation with an actual professional right uh from that perspective and of course the good brother greg is bringing in the sex therapist the uh what else you do brother we'll get to that in a second yeah ladies and gentlemen, at the time girl. you jump in steps you jump in steps <laughs> Pronouns of all ages. Welcome to good brother Wayne Bay into the chat with us today. Damn, damn. What up, though? Appreciate y'all, brother. Listen, man. You, you know when you see, a, when you see a black man. Massive. Listen, when you see a black man with a bookshelf that massive and a do-rag get on this call, <laughs> you know it's about to be some real information. To be honest, any man with a bookshelf that big and a do-rag on, I'm paying attention to. Thank <laughs> Oh man, appreciate y'all. Peace, brother. Oh, man. How you feeling? I'm great, brother. I'm great, man. I'm, I appreciate y'all having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So, JD, to your point, um, do not steal the thunder of the thunder. Do not steal the thunder of the brothers that are on right now. We would love for y'all to introduce yourself really quick. Uh, Greg, you know they saw you on season one, was it? Yeah, yeah, but. Season one. Since there's been some updates, like go ahead and give us that quick bio. Sure, sure, sure. Still doing my thing in sex therapy uh, down here in Texas, uh, sex coaching as well uh, nationally. And so um, since then, uh, I really took a deeper dive into Tantra and uh, coming across wonderful human beings like Wayne Bay, uh, Grand Trine, uh, just really trying to uh, build and expound myself and really just kind of really grow in these spiritual spaces. So this iteration of myself has had more experience than just book knowledge and then hearsay about what's going on uh, in these tantric spaces. And so uh, I'm still learning. I'm, I'm new. I'm new here. But, you know, that's not going to be long. I will be, you know, doing great things like my boy Wayne Bay or over here, Wayne Bay and, 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 and everybody else out there. So peace and love. For sure. For sure. And good brother Wayne, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Um, what's, what's your, what's your weapons of choice in this, this game of sexual mastery? For sure. All right. So I'm Wayne Bay, uh, Energy Alchemy One on most social sites. Um, I'm a Reiki master. I'm a root worker and I'm a Tantra certified Tantric energy healing practitioner. Hmm. So I get down with a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Okay. And we're going to learn a whole lot about all of it. Two days. This is a balance, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, I mean, you said that quite casually. Like that's a bit too cavalier. These are these are three yeah. very very heavy topics that you delved in because you can't just read a book and go to YouTube University like y'all yeah, get learning and apply. So <laughs> yeah. that's right. I'm excited to see where this combo goes. About to dive deep. So if anything, if you do not mind, uh, if y'all allow me the latitude of initiation, I like to kick this off. All right, cool. So, leading in order of operations, right? Greg, as a sex therapist, I'm sure that you've dealt with setting healthy boundaries with your clients along their individual journeys, or shifting their mindsets to be more healthy and harmonious, right? That being said, multiple dynamics exist at once. These streets, they're there, right? They are these streets. <laughs> Sexual maturity has, that's a lot of variations, right? There are no standardized definitions when you're outside, of it, especially if you're talking about the intergenerational method. That's a completely different conversation. What's your perspective on how to have a sexual connection without actual, like, needing penetration or some type of, you know, if you want to be more inclusive, like, without just getting down to business? How do you maintain that strong, like, visceral, Ooh, I want that. Yeah. Reaction that we all get when we know we see something that we like. Yeah. Uh, 
One of the things when I hear that question uh, that rings in my spirit, in my head, in everything throughout my whole body is desire. And mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the definition of desire, how I define it currently, how I've been taught to define it is uh, being able to have the freedom sexually, being able to choose what you want and also being able to have shareable experiences, uh, especially in tantric spaces. Shareable experiences is very important, being able to give and receive. Uh, that's very important when it comes to desire. So when it comes to how do I create boundaries uh, for myself as a person, um, knowing what my desire is and knowing where it ends. And so being able to communicate that, you know, uh, I like BDSM. I'm poly. Right. And and all these other things. So when I'm when I'm speaking to if I'm in these streets dating some other woman, I'm going to tell her that. Right. And mm -hmm. so we're going to have conversations about that. So we'll know where I can operate in a healthy way and where she may or may not want to operate as a sex therapist working with those clients. I'm just there to support them. You know, I'm not there to shame them or anything like that. I think stats are like 90 to 95 percent of people deal with shame at one at some point in their life. That's a hell of a lot of motherfuckers. Right. <laughs> Dealing with a lot of shame. So. Yeah. Um, so we're really working in, in a lot of spaces, in a lot of cases to deal with shame. And so um, just knowing what my boundaries are as a professional and the person really working on their boundaries and understanding what their desire is, is kind of how we can really communicate and have a healthy communication about, uh, you know, spaces and, and keep those boundaries what they are and, and, and healthy. Yeah. Good brother, you are laying up. Well, you are alley ooping this thing for us already, because as y'all know, when we talk about masculine and feminine energy, we really try to help put it into containers so that people can understand what we mean by these terms. And we often speak about how femininity is associated more readily with freedom. So you mentioning the concept of like desire and how that's about a freedom perspective. It's always beautiful to start with the feminine, in my opinion. But um, I think to the, to the West of what you're saying, it's important to understand how having those healthy boundaries, creating structures, as as well as like leading from that place of like, look, this is who I am. You can take it or you can leave it. But this is who I am is where that masculine side comes in. And it's like we can be free, but we also need to be safe. That's right. And it ain't safe if you haven't necessarily brought yourself into the space the way I brought myself into the space to the point you were saying around shared experiences. So like, yeah, brother, you, you hitting all the, the key buzzwords for us already. But at the same time, drop a knowledge. So I appreciate that. Um, Good brother Wayne, your practice is a little bit different, right? And I can imagine that there's some aspect of like therapy and that comes into it may not necessarily be like communicative ver therapy, but more so body therapy in different pieces. But how does this show up in your work? Like because you're huh, literally more hands on, right? <laughs> and so when you have attraction, right? When you have this natural visceral connection. How do you handle the balance between like this is a client, this is a partner, and then everything in between that you have to balance? All right. So it's part of it is about discipline because you will have like a woman on your table being super aroused, uh, being orgasmic, and she gonna get up and she gonna be ready. But you gotta have that discipline. You gotta have them ethics. You gotta have that boundary to be like, nah. It's not what we're here for, you know what I mean? Uh, and another part of it is just understanding feminine energy. And in, in our grand trine system, we have, we we label like four archetypes of feminine energy. Mm. So we'll have like the nurturing energy, we'll have that sensual, sexy energy, we'll have the uh, the right brain intuitive faculty, we'll have uh, what we call the treasure chest is like the nesting instinct. So being able to categorize all of the archetypes and not necessarily all of the archetypes, but being able to categorize feminine energy into archetypes and into sections, it helps you appreciate the energy behind the woman beyond just trying to, you know, have sex or whatever, trying to get your rocks off. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Now, yeah. quick follow up on that, because we talking a lot about sex already and we jumping like right into it, like JD said, but um, we also often talk about platonic intimacy mm -hmm. and how the same sexual energy 
the same connective energy um, can be valuable in a friendship, like a fully platonic, platonic friendship with the discipline. Could y'all Definitely. touch on that real quick in terms of like how that shows up for y'all? Because women are great friends, in my opinion, but it's about a discipline a lot of times because, you know, I'll let y'all get into it, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. And and I don't want to answer for Wayne, but I'm pretty sure he's got fine ass friends, you know, and, and you know, it comes from point. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you can have a fine ass friend and you can even tell it like, hey, you fine as hell. Yeah. We ain't gonna do and you can have the joke, but it doesn't even go there. It mm. it really kind of is like the original question, how do you, the boundaries in these streets? You just have to understand where your desire begins and ends and be able to communicate that. I got a friend now, you know, we're not going to be in a relationship simply because she doesn't want a poly relationship. Mm. And, you know, that would destroy all the things that we had. We used to date and it just didn't work out, you know, but we understand that friendship is where it's at. If she's sick, she can call me. I got a juice. I'm taking my ass back to the house. I'm doing whatever, whatever it is, you know, people have to understand platonic relationships don't need to always have to involve sex. You can still be full. You can still get all you think, all you need out of life by having these, you know, experiences to whatever degree. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of society just we always base everything on penetrative sex. It doesn't it just doesn't have to be that. And we need to understand what being full feels like and being rich in whatever we're needing in life. If we don't know what that looks or feels like, we're going to keep working and searching for that shit and we're going to mess up friendships. And so, but yeah, we, we, we definitely have that. And, and, you know, it, it comes to a point, you just understand what it feels like to be full and you just don't need to have sex with this one. And that's okay. The funny thing about that is when you spoke to that, I saw faces of friends because you Literally. do have the conversations and both of y'all sit like one day when either one of you or both of you around the same time frame have the realization of why don't we take this further? Or more importantly, it's been X amount of years. Why have we never? And then you say, oh, okay. You, you realize that the value of this connection, right? And what it brings to you. Right. And how it, it helps you develop. You would be shooting yourself and probably that other person in the foot by trying to take it into that space. Right. Because the dynamics will change. Right. Also, chances are you probably have the opportunity to explore that with plenty of other people. So why are you trying to force a tetrododecahedron into a square thing? What? <laughs> 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 My boy made that, he made that whole... <laughs> <laughs> this is, but it's that complex, right? Like, think about how many levels, right? Like, that right. one friend. That's right. Y'all have never really been, you know, maybe you have gone to a certain place, but you've no desire to really take it there now. Because when you look at what you get as a result of just holding this space, like being that container that she can go to, mm-hmm. or he, however you rock it, however they identify. And not needing to go the other 30, going to 70 and stopping. That's right. Mm -hmm. Just hold the 70 line. You don't actually need to go to 85 because now you're moving into, you're approaching. Um, And realizing that they have that same space with you. Like there's a power that they have that could bring a certain dynamic to your life that may actually throw you off your alignment. So like the, the discipline. Cause it's not like you haven't thought about it, right? Like, you know, sugar cane tastes sweet. Do you need that much sugar in your diet right now? That's right. And so, um, Court, if you don't mind, I'm gonna take a page out of your book, leaning it in the tantra direction, right? The relationship mm-hmm. to, to like self and it being personal. And I'm curious as to how all of us came into communion with Tantra? Like, how did you first learn about it? Was it something that someone proposed or like brought to you? Did you have like a Daryl Strawberry moment and you just tripped yourself into a no hitter? Like, (laughs) what was your come to Tantra moment? That was a good one. Yeah, yeah. All right, I I, I, I can start first. Uh, My first entry into Tantra was uh, 
probably I was a little kid and my mom had these Tantra books laying around. I don't know if they was laying around or if I was sneaking and getting them. But anyway, <laughs> I was going picking up. Did you found them? She had my open up anyway. Tantra books. Yeah, I, I was uh I started picking up the Tantra books. And I think I was just interested in them because of the pictures. They had like real graphic pictures, mm. you know, for a kid or whatever, man. And uh, but I, I don't know. I guess I started reading it early, early on, mm. and I kept reading it, kept like kind of looking at it. And then by the time I was ready to have like sex, you know, as a teenager, I started. Uh, I ain't want to just have like the regular porn sex. I wanted to like let's breathe, and let's look in each other's eyes, and let's <laughs> let's try these different things. And and it's like, man, get. Yeah. Get out of here, yeah, hand to heart. <laughs> like, get out of here, man. Let's let's just do it. You know what I mean? But uh, oh, God. so that was that. And then uh fast forward probably like 10 years after that, I was on YouTube and I saw this guy named Nick Yama. He was uh mm-hmm. he had a woman on the massage table, she was fully clothed, and uh he just was had his hand over her and he was uh bringing her to orgasm, like without touching it. And I was just was that was like the best thing in the world to I me. Mean, it was so fascinating to me that I decided I need to go and experiment and try that. So I made up in my mind what I thought he was doing, and I was getting results. I was getting a hands-free orgasm, but it wasn't consistent. And mm. eventually, uh, you know, I bounced around to different tantra schools and trying to learn. I was I was searching for this because Nick Yama was off the scene at the time. So I'm searching, searching, searching. Finally, I came across Grand Trine Tantra and uh, Grandmaster Yao, who that's where I met Greg through. And uh, he explained to me that Tantra was more than sex. It was more than orgasm. It was a healing. It was a healing. You could heal physically. You could heal emotionally, spiritually, mm-hmm. uh, and initiate spiritual growth. It was just a lot more to it. And that was like, it just rung a bell with me. You know what I mean? I, I started doing it, and I started working with women as far as the energy work. Uh, it, it seemed like it was it was right on time because I was always meeting women that had trauma different trauma, different baggages or whatever. Mm-hmm. And this gave me something to do. Like, oh, I can, this is what, like it all made sense. Like it all clicked. Like, like I can go help her. I can I can help by getting this information. And uh, that's been my Tantra journey, bro. Mm. Yeah, for me, it was really, I didn't know what Tantra was coming up. Like I would experience it through like shows. I would see people, couples, doing energy work with each other, connection work with each other. It's like, I don't know what the fuck that is. And so as, as I got older, I'm just like, I'm, I still see these things. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know what it is. And then um, I, I would say about 2017, sex therapy school, I got introduced to a hell of a lot of shit. And this was one of them. And, you know, it caused me to go back into my into my spiritual corner. My, okay, what am I doing? What is, what's going on with my personal beliefs in the here and now and where do I grow? And I didn't know any spaces. And so, you know, I would just read books and, um, you know, and I had that basic knowledge. And then I want to say about a year ago, uh, a dog, Candace, uh, Dr. Cooper, uh, Candace Cooper, love it. I, I, know, I think you know her, Wayne. She's she's also part of Grand Trine. Um, she was telling about her journey in Grand Trine. And then she introduced me to Master Yao. Um, when she did that, it was more so, okay, I got brothers and sisters that are in here and it's not, you know, it's not something that's owned by white people because although the books don't say that, that's what I'm seeing here in America, right? True. It's Very just true. Simply, I'm just like, I'm, something don't add up. And so I think right. that's mostly why what, what, what kept me away from diving into it like I'm, like I'm doing now in my early journey. And so um, every day I'm reading a book 20 pages or 30, I'm doing something, a different book, a different book. And so, um, you know, Grand Trine is where I'm at now. And I'm just going to continue this journey, man, and see where it leads me. So it's a spiritual thing, but I also want to help give and help couples connect and and show them that you don't have to just depend on, you know, the feelings that through your wayside and the shit like that, just to bring pleasure. There's other ways to, to bring pleasure and connection. And, and this is very well ways to do it. For sure. Yes. And there we go. <laughs> Corey, you want to take this one? Uh, yeah, I'll jump in. Um, man, t- Tantra for me largely came about um, 
when I was beginning to study Taoism, right? Tao, Taoism, whichever one you prefer. Um, but it was a, a time in my life where I was really looking at how to learn how to surrender more and like seeking to control less. Um, you know, I, I talk about surrender a lot because that for me is one of the most important aspects of like every part of my life. If I am in a flow, it's usually because I've surrendered. If I'm out of a flow, it's usually because I'm not surrendering in some way. And so learning about Taoism, a lot of it for me started with like, um, well, it started with Kundalini yoga and focusing on the different aspects of like, how do I cultivate my sacral energy into something other than like sexual prowess? Um, but then I had a, a, a rites of passage that I was doing where there were a couple of elders who were just talking about these concepts of like semen retention and sacred seed technology and how you can improve your sexual prowess also through these same concepts of like learning to surrender more, how to uh, balance out your qigong energy, um, even aspects of like breathing techniques and different things. And so from a young age, like I was always, always, always into this concept of uh, the pleasure principle, like, like we all know, like Janet talked about, but that was always for me something that was there. Like I always knew if the woman is pleased, um, then my pleasure will be increased. I don't know why, but it always just made sense to me. So like when I started to get into studying the practices, a lot of them I was already doing, you know, and it's one of those things when you look at like the sacred sexual part of it from a practice perspective, not from a practitioner, but like what you want to do with your partner. A lot of it, you know, is just basic stuff. Like if you want to last longer, what do most people do when you about to come? You stop. <laughs> you try to give yourself a second to compose. And so learning that like, oh, not only can I, not only have I been doing that, but like there's ways where I can do it without having to stop the experience. Like I can start to have more mastery over my physical self. Um, that said, I will be very, very honest. Uh, by far, the most like get the out of here thing that has ever, ever come up for me in this space was the concept of semen retention and ejaculation. Mm -hmm. Like semen retention was like, all right, you're abstaining from sex. Initially, that's how I looked at it. But then when I started to learn more about ejaculation, it was like, wait, so I can still have sex. I just don't have to ejaculate, but I can still orgasm. I was like, what the hell? Like, what did I just stumble into? And that that for me is where it really started to solidify in, ter in terms of like, oh, now I'm really interested because. This isn't just a way for me to focus on healing, on surrendering more, on controlling less. But like you tell me, I can also get more funky in the bedroom. <laughs> yeah. um, and so that's that's where it started. Like for me, that that's really where it started from those two spaces, from learning how to surrender more. Uh, but then also looking at it like, yo, there's there's a whole piece of this that's just like purely in the space of pleasure and improving and enhancing and increasing the pleasure from a male perspective. And that I had never heard before, right? Like I knew that women could have multiple orgasms and multiple types of orgasms. I didn't know that we could. That's right. And I didn't know that they could be intensified and that they had different layers to them and all these different concepts. So for me, that's, that's where it really went in. So like, I think that's where, you know, a lot of what we see now uh, from like a social media perspective starts to emphasize. Like, you know, I've been retaining my seed for 12 months. And it's just like, bro, <laughs> like, that's not, it's not how this works. That's not that how sounds it works. like a recipe for road rage. Right. Now, no disrespect, right? Because I went a year, right? It was for a spiritual initiation, but I, I did go a year without releasing. And it was a major difference to my life. Like it changed everything. At the same time, that's the only year I've ever done that. Like I'm not going to keep doing it. Yeah. It was a reset button for me, but I figure like, that's a lot of where this thing gets tangled and twisted when we're talking about how it gets uh, popularized versus what it really is. You know what I'm saying? When we talk about semen retention and all those different things. So like, yeah, that's, that's where it's been for me. JD, you want to, do want to give us your end of it? Um, that was, I was <laughs> speaking to, to the theme of the season. 
on some all black too. Like <laughs> my blurriness always tended toward the side of like warrior monk discipline as a kid. I don't know why that whole Bushido aesthetic just seemed so dope to me as an eight year old and I kind of carried on. Um and then the men of sports led that to okay man, like I really just want to be like Shaolin with it. And then I started to care about sex. And that ironically enough, I, I jokingly said that they're all strawberry anecdote because I kind of slipped up into it and had no frame of reference for what it was. I just noticed this this feels really good, like that other thing, but also very different. Mm-hmm. And also it's been like four hours. So what is this? Um it wasn't until years later that I developed a real nomenclature for any of it. Mm. I mean, like I, I heard Tantra dropped around almost as a spoof, you know, watching the dude who smashed Stifler's mom in American Pie. But like, I never actually done re- real study about that. That wasn't something that I was readily like in front of. Um, it wasn't until like I learned how to ask Google better questions and then You know, being deep into college and having access to professors who teach stuff like this, um, that that door really started to open. And that's when the life journey towards like self-discovery simultaneously, we're just going to throw like serendipity in there. Like I would say all of those levels of awareness catapulted around the same time. Makes sense. Makes and this sense. is just, you know, iteration, whatever of that process. Mm. You know what? One thing that we have not touched on in all this conversation about sex, and I think this is a, a perfect time to get into it with regards to this topic of like semen retention, sacred seed mm-hmm. technology, is that whole concept of what they call no fat. Like, don't <laughs> masturbate, don't jerk off. That's another yes and for me. Exactly. <laughs> like, like I understand what you mean. Um, for me, when I hear like fab, I think of okay, nobody's around. You open your laptop or you use your phone and you're looking at porn, and then that's the basis of the sexual engagement. It's you engaging with the screen with these avatars in it that are playing a role that they may or may not live like in real life. Because <laughs> anyone who's met like sex workers or porn stars at home, they'd be real regular. They're yep. trying to eat French fries on the floor <laughs> and mismatch socks, fall yep. asleep watching Netflix. Like they ain't trying to do the spectacular stuff. That's work for them. That's right. But like the role right, that they right. play is like the the live action rendering of a fantasy that these like metrics or these algorithms have deemed to be like highly engageable and so for the sake of viewership and clickbait well that's what we're going to act out because we know that's going to move and that's how you keep the lights on all of that has nothing to do with your orgasm it also has everything to do with your orgasm because it's the industrial complex behind you it doesn't actually show you how to interact with the person and connect so how would you ever engage on a tantric level with anything, self included. It's purely external. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, in that context, I would say you should probably chill on that. Yeah. yeah. That has nothing to do with like self exploration through like auto stimulation, because that's a completely different experience. Yeah. Greg, does that ever come up in your practice as a therapist? Actually, yeah, I- I've had one client that he went through a no fat program and mm-hmm. They have them out there. And if you get a they chance, got a program for that. They got a program. <laughs> they no That's a thing. You got a 12-step no-fat program. <laughs> Went through a no-fat program. And, you know, the things that he felt like he got from no-fat, it all it felt like Tantra, right? He felt, but there was no visualizations. There was no allowing to engage in the senses. There was nothing. There was nothing. He was just told, uh, basically, you know, of course, like we're saying now, don't do shit. Don't do yeah. shit and just blessings will come. You know, I don't think in any kind of religion or practice in anything that blessings would just come without you communicating with the higher. 
communicate and, 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 and putting it out there. This is what you want. This is what you need. And so in that program, he just didn't communicate, you know, with himself sexually. Right. He didn't touch himself. He didn't do anything. And we have to do a lot of reality testing. We have to do a lot of processing. OK, so you're not touching yourself and you're feeling like, you know, these rewarding relationships are going to come to you. How are you doing in your rewarding relationship? How are, they, how are they panning out? Man, this bitch just slapped the shit out of me. I don't know what's going on. There's no fat program. I was like, listen. <laughs> I was like, listen. You're angry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. I like, I like the, I like the focus on trying to get better. But yeah. uh, you know, do your no fat. Let's do something a little bit more practical. And you know, so we did a little bit more putting it out into reality and trying to put a little bit more practice, but also a safety plan with this man because he's putting himself out there to make him look like a fool and he's very vulnerable in some unhealthy spaces. And mm -hmm. so um, I, I don't like, and I probably shouldn't say this as a practitioner, but I'm just going to say it anyway. I don't like no fat, kind of like, I guess what has already been said anyway. I, I don't think it's practical. Uh, you have too much of things that you can do, uh, you know, spiritual masturbation. You don't have to let go, right? Uh, you have all these other things that you can do um, to bring those good graces and the things that you want to create. And I just don't see where NoFap is doing that. It's it's just not, I don't think it's working. But, you know, just like the, there's a placebo for everything. And, you know, if you believe that it works, then, hey, I, I ain't going to knock, knock it for you. That's so, it. Look, anything you give to a God is good for a God. Yeah. That's what that God is. Yep. Wayne, what about you? Does this does this topic ever come up with you in, in terms of the work you do or even personally? Personally, uh, I don't know much about no fat, man. Like when I see the video and the algorithm, I just skip it, right? <laughs> but as far as, um, no, seriously, I just skip it. So I, I'm not familiar with like all of what they believe and all of what they think. I will say that uh, masturbation, I say it's important. It's important mm -hmm. to know what you like. It's important to feel, be able to experience pleasure on your own. And it's also a good training tool. So in, in a lot of Tantra schools and a lot of Tantra systems, you have, I ain't gonna say you have to, but you're you're taught to masturbate and that's how you're gonna start developing mm -hmm. uh, longevity or, you know what I'm saying, start building up your prostate to build up semen retention. You know what I mean? Uh, so I think masturbation is important. I would, I, now I wouldn't say you need to be ejaculating I wouldn't be trying to ejaculate, but I say no fap itself as far as never masturbating is not a good thing, but you wouldn't want to necessarily release every time you are, you know, stimulating yourself is what I'd yeah. say. That makes and sense. I, I, I don't want to put out there, you know, it is just, uh, just like JD said, it's just, you know, don't look at the stimulation of porn. Don't let porn just, you know, ruin your, um, your experience with having healthy relationships, because just like you said, it's those, those are actors. But you know, yeah. there's a lot of other ways that no fat is still. I think they're they're miseducating people on on ways to engage in pleasure and relationships. Um, and they just got to come, just come, come on to the masturbation and this oh, party, and and let us work together. Uh, you know, if you're helping people, I love it, but. You know, what? It, about this bullshit, man. It, it reminds me a lot. And that's why I said the 12 step process earlier, um, because it reminds me a lot of the different programs that are helping addicts and addiction. Right. And so I can understand from like a sex addiction perspective where that premise can come in. I still don't agree with it um, yeah. because I believe that most addictions need to be uh, need to be addressed from a totally different perspective than just like stop doing it. Right. Um, but that's a different conversation. Um, but in this this sense, I think that's where a lot of it comes from is more of that like 12 step. I've stayed away from this thing because it's actually caused so much harm in my life, but I can't stop doing it. So more of the addiction perspective. Um, but like to your point, to point. both of y'all's point, like when that trickles down to the social media algorithms and it gets to the average man for whatever reason, well, now he's in his mind getting it tangled and twisted to think that this is. This just this act of not discovering pleasure with yourself is going to improve 
anything, right? Like not even a specific thing, but like you removing pleasure as a component is going to improve something. I mean, it'll teach you something. That's for damn sure. But is it going to actually improve something? Um, and a lot of what the elders that I initially got into these practices from a Taoist perspective used to always tell me is like, before you go even try to practice these techniques techniques with a partner, masturbation is how you start to practice with yourself. Because right. the whole concept right. of ejaculation is about understanding that the orgasm starts well before you, like, you start to have that shaft tension that's you know moving and flexing that then causes the semen to come out. Yep. You're starting your orgasm way, way back in the prostate, but you got to be able to strengthen that muscle use that muscle, feel that muscle to even feel that. And so then that process of like, once you do start getting into learning the different practices, which, you know, we'll give y'all some resources for later. We're not going to get deep into that in this episode, but you know, we talk about it. So like, this is that aspect where it's like, you can, you know, you don't have to take my word for it, right? Like we're going to give you that LeVar, LeVar Burton aspect of it. <laughs> but I did want to ask y'all because, you know, we, we operate in very unique circles as men with these topics uh, what we do from a practice, of, what we do from a perspective of brotherhood, like who we're interacting with. And so we all understand that like our family members, our homies, the folks we grew up with, like our cousin and them, right? Like most men don't have any conceptual framework for what we're talking about right now. And I wonder from y'all's perspective, um, what do you think would happen if more men understood how to ejaculate, other than there being less babies, obviously. You do realize <laughs> by asking this question, this ensures a part two, because we already like 40 minutes in. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna have to, we won't have to do it. We're gonna have to bring this one into two I mean, parts. I'm cool. Like, I just wanted to make sure you knew what yeah. you started. Okay, yes. cool. ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, <laughs> pronouns of all ages, there will be a part two to this, so stay tuned yeah. for us to get deeper. But like, yeah, for y'all, like, what, what do y'all think? Because I know my circle of friends, like, man, life is so much more abundant because we are all operating from that sense of like honorability right. all the way all the way through. Well, I think if if we had more options to to exercise sex, pleasure, and understanding how to create our own spaces for healthy reasons, so and so so on and so forth. Now we learn how to add value to ourselves. You know, it's kind of like people just have only one way to add value to themselves. And it's just through the penis and ejaculation. And that's sad, right? There's so much more to add value to yourself. And I think that if uh, a lot of men knew what ejaculation was and started practicing it um, and also understood the visualization and, and how to create, you know, um, I think, of course, I, I kind of sound like a reading rainbow situation, right? But <laughs> the world would be a safer place. The world would be, uh, we would be, like you said, Courtney, uh, operating in abundance in so many ways. And, um, you know, it's just unfortunate that we just don't have enough tools to exercise pleasure, um, to exercise ways to keep ourselves safe and to, to just enjoy life just through something as simple as that. Yeah. I had, I had to think on this for a minute. Uh, I think, and not just, I, I want to say not just ejaculation, because ejaculation is referring to a specific, like you don't even have to have no ejaculation. Right. You know what I mean? So I think uh, it'll just help me open up to more pleasure. Yeah. Not and, and not just seeking to hit that peak and then you down, you tired. But there's a lot of pleasure out here for us. We can, like you said earlier, Courtney. We can be multi-orgasmic too, and mm -hmm. we can we can experience orgasms all over our body. We have multiple bodies actually, so we can experience a light body orgasm and an energy body orgasm. So, like, we have way more uh, pleasure that we can experience. We're very limited by just having uh, an ejaculation. Uh, what is it called? I don't know, like a mindset, maybe like just an yeah. ejaculation mindset. You know, it's, 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 it's a lot more pleasure out there for us. I mean, what that look like in action, like, would the world be a better place because we all having more pleasure? You know what I mean? So it, it's a lot to think about. That's That was a serious question, bro. Try to get into those things on this show sometimes, man. Like, 
I definitely know that there's there's a lot that comes from just just further understanding what pleasure means to the male body. You know what I'm saying? And I think a, a lot of that, especially when we're talking about Tantra, is is one of the most impactful things that changes that lens of like, because, you know, homies always ask, like, you will post something online and we talk about something and I get a quick DM slide like, yo, my G, all right, so, so boom, like what you're saying is, and it really does take a intent, uh, uh, an intentional conversation to like help the brain move into a space where it's like, yo, your, 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 your dick is not the only place where you receive maximum pleasure, right? You have erogenous zones that if you learn how to stimulate and maximize, like you don't even know where you could go with those things. And, and I think a lot of times, like I said, for me, like I knew some of these things initially just from focusing on pleasing a woman. It teaches you a lot about yourself. Absolutely. But there's still a whole bunch more that I got into when I started to learn about myself that was important. And then it went back and made what I could do in the bedroom with the woman even more greater because it was like, Oh, I thought this was it. But then it was like, no, 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 there's more. JD, I, I see you jumping in there. So I know you have uh I'm I'm not jumping in. This is this is really emphatic amen. I guess something I want to shoot out there, and you know, this is just me being vulnerable. So uh, you know, we had an in like we had an uh, illumination process two weeks ago, and I got you know a lot of knowledge. Uh, some things I did know, some things I didn't. You know, I know, as we probably all know, we have the male G spot. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know that that can lead to uh, that's pretty much an, a doorway to multiple orgasms for men, mm-hmm. right? I didn't right. think that you had to stimulate that. You know, you could have it without it. And I'm pretty sure men are doing that, but you can easily have it if you were to milk that. And so now I'm just like, mm-hmm. okay, how can I do this? How can I get to a woman? And say, hey, I need you to milk this for me. I don't know how strong my orgasm is going to be, but if I want to fuck, I need you to be there. <laughs> or if I just need you to hold me, I need you to be there because yeah. I want to test these multiple orgasms right away. Like, I need to do that. Yeah. Just phrasing intentional because between milk it, uh, touching on that. <laughs> He's doing perfect segues. I think that's that's a big part of it, too, is if more men were aware of what it meant to ejaculate, they would also be aware of the fact that like the prostate, the, the, the perineum, the pelvic floor, like all these different pieces that are a part of it, increase your sexual experience. Absolutely. And it actually takes time before you know that you're with a partner that can actually reciprocate that experience. Yeah. You know, you could be the baddest chick out there and I got you on my line. But that don't mean that you're going to be able to like really go there with me. And oh. once you do experience these things, for me, it became standard. Like, I'm sorry, but like, I can't, I can't, I don't want to do casual sex. I Let me rephrase. <laughs> I can do some kinky <laughs> shit, right? With the right partner, with the right play. But we already got to both know that we're there. You understand what I'm saying? And there's spaces and places for that type of stuff. Like black kink is a whole thing that we're going to get into in this part too, because that's just real. But more often than not, like you don't, I don't find that I meet women that just know about these spaces in the same way. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And and that, that was one of the issues with my soon to be ex now. So <laughs> we don't have we don't have a we don't have that relationship. Yeah, uh, I told her I was like, look, you know, we're arguing too much. We're doing all this and that. My dick doesn't have that relationship with you that I need to build all these kinky experiences i'm gonna need with you i know you bad right you look bad at least you look bad right whatever mm-hmm. and so when it comes to sex i'm ha- i'm going to have more enjoyable sex with somebody else that doesn't that probably looks better or even worse because we just they'll probably have a better relationship i'll probably have a better penis to vagina relationship with them and that's where we need to do that's where we need to do the work to have those kinky and and, and healthy sexual experiences uh, and, and and it has to be an understanding of, you know, I can be vulnerable and talk to you about how I need to orgasm, what I like with pleasure and all these other things. And I'm just, you know, homeboys are not having those conversations with their with their with their uh, women or whatnot or, or men. And, you know, that, that definitely needs to be a conversation 
to understand the, the expression of sexual needs once when it comes to multiple orgasms and pleasure. We just we just don't have the education or experience to do that in all the healthiest ways. Right. So yeah, anyway, I agree. I agree. You preach it to the choir, brother. Listen, just because it's a yes doesn't mean we know exactly what your why is. We appreciate that. Um hmm, it's I don't want to close this out. <laughs> we got a little bit of like time. Just like put a pin in this before we delve into anything too deep because that's going to be another 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> we do have to close this one out. But, but, or and, uh, stay in tune for part two, right? That's coming your way next week. We'll definitely be diving deeper as we explore shame and how it impacts black male sexuality as well as sex energy work. Right. Most of y'all know or at least have an idea of this uh, from watching that lovely piece of artwork, uh, P Valley, which was the inspiration behind calling this seven pounds pressure, right? Because that's all it takes. And uh just bring back all the energy, all the curiosity, and whatever activation product of choice. <laughs> <laughs> that gets you in that space. Uh, so yeah, next week, let's run it back. Let's get this part two going because we're doing Tatra, right? So obviously, we're going to give you more than one round. Uh, Brother Grange, what resources do we have for the good people this week? All right. So first and foremost, I will say this. The whole seven pounds of pressure conversation, When you, if you saw that episode of P-Valley where Diamond was doing his thing, the good brother Wayne is the living, breathing actual version of that and we're gonna get I've been fighting the urge to say that all episode just so listen clear. man that, that that's <laughs> that right there is like oh look at diamond it's like nah brothers really do this work like we gonna show you <laughs> for sure. For sure. I'll let my partner zirconia you know me uh, vibranium that's what we gonna call you vibranium yeah we're gonna call you brother vibranium <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it live he ain't lying I've seen it in person but that's you that's the first that. resource I would provide to y'all, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, pronouns of all ages. Slide in these brothers' DMs. Like, if you have more questions about these topics, uh, if you are interested in anything that we have addressed today, like these are professionals. These are not just some dudes we got off the street. This is actually what they do for a living in a profession. And so you can jump in and literally slide in their DMs, professionally speaking, y'all. Like, let's keep it a hundred. Um, but that's what that would be the first one for both of y'all. Like. Hit up Greg, hit up Wayne, see what you can get there. Um, for men out there who are interested in these topics but want to research a little bit more before you jump in and talk to somebody, I would personally recommend The Multi-Orgasmic Man by Montauk Chia. Um, it was the book that I first started oh, with. Good. It was dope because it broke it down from a perspective of Taoism and Taoism, but then it also gave you the practices. Like, Here's what you can do on a regular basis. Right. And some of these things were super practical. Other things were like, wow, I'm going to have to work up to that. Right. But it was right there in a book, The Multi-Orgasmic Man by Montauk Chia. Um, let's see. Greg, Wayne, any any resources that you would love to provide or books? Wayne. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I got, I got all the well, books. I, mean, I know you Wayne said, I am the book. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm, I'm the book. Greg, you got to be if you've gone to classes and stuff like formal education. We don't need an entire dissected like fifty-four page <laughs> analogy <laughs> with a thirteen-page intro. Like, give us three joints. Oh, um, like, you, uh, you, you got to wait. Okay, okay. Yeah, wait, yeah I, are, I, 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 I could, I could drop a couple. Uh, the the Tao of sexology. Mm -hmm. I think it's by Dr. Stephen Chang. It's uh, it's a, uh, it's along the lines of the multi-orgasmic male. A lot of exercises in there. A lot of information. I also want to drop uh, go to GrandtronInt.com and Master Yao, who's Greg and I's mentor. Uh, he has about five books on there, and really, you could just pick any book out of the lineup, and it's gonna give you a lot of news you can use. Uh, like the holy grail of orgasm. When I, earlier when I was talking about the archetypes of energy, he has one on awakening the masculine, uh, awakening the master feminine and awakening the master masculine. Uh, and then he got the holy grail of orgasm. So those type of books will give you some of the, some of the information you will need before you like, if you want to decide whether you want to take it serious or just be personal with it, 
So that was my recommendation. Sure, sure. I have two books and uh, a website. The website is ipsalu.org, I-P-S-A-L-U.org. Uh, and you can go there and you can learn about fire breath orgasms. You can learn about all these other things. And they'll kind of teach you step by step what you need to do. Uh, if you're not, if you choose, you don't want to go to Master Ya or Nityama, which I highly suggest you, you do, just like Wayne Bay said, um, because you're just going to need to apply, just like, you know, JD is saying, you know, you, you have that knowledge. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to apply it now. And so um two books would, would be Lotus and the Flower, and one that I kind of uh kind of skimmed through is Soul Sex Tantra for Two. Soul Sex Tantra for Two. And so those are I, I think two affordable, well, three affordable um references that you can go to and, and get right. I wanna I wanna say Jewel and the Lotus and, and the Jewel and the Lotus. Oh, sorry, that's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah. Th that's a black man too. So What's interesting about this is that uh, the three guys that we all mentioned are all black men who kind of like really put on for us when it wasn't when it wasn't popular. Like when and it's still not that popular. It's, it's getting better, but you like you got to think you being an outcast back in the nineties. You're an outcast. Mm -hmm. They think you a devil worshiper or something. So shout out to Sun Yeta Sari Swati, who's from Chicago, and Nick Yama. And Master Yao, man, because they were three black pioneers in the Tantra space. For sure, for sure. Well, thank y'all, good brothers, as always, for coming through. We will see y'all next week to, to continue this conversation and keep it going. But thank y'all for coming through, man. We appreciate y'all. Yeah, no problem. Listen, thank you so much for your presence, man. This was got into some good game, as the OGs like to say. Uh, <laughs> with that being said, we're going to send you to the green room real quick and uh, walk these dogs. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Woo. Right. Fire in the booth. Second level coming soon. Second level coming soon. My only one detail, I got so annoyed, bro. Like, the sun is setting and that ruined my backlight. Yeah, because your light was popping in the beginning and then there was the middle. I had adjusted like, four times. I had to adjust it. I get it. We all good. Adjusted. I mean, we the conversation can fit, continues. That's why we got beautiful minds on here because everybody keeps it going. Um, it, but to close us out, let's get right. into this uh, attitude, gratitude, and latitude like we like to do every episode. So let's see. I grab the attitude for this week. Um, make more first. Gratitude first. Gratitude, gratitude, attitude, latitude. Sorry, I'm joking. Come on now, no. So no, gratitude to the good brothers Greg and Wayne for coming through and blessing us with their knowledge and expertise. Um, as always, yes, you know, we try to bring y'all these conversations from multiple perspectives. So thank you to those brothers for coming in and doing that. Gratitude up first. Second, we have our attitude. Attitude. So I'll take that one and say uh, this week for y'all, make more porn than you watch. I'll leave it at that. That was really good. That was a good one. That was a good one. Um, and my latitude is I said what I said. Here's what I actually meant. We, we're going to have to open the next segment with that one because they're going to be like, what do you mean, JD? It's kind of the point, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, thank y'all for coming through as always. Uh, we'll be back next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. That part.